Hello, future engineers. Welcome. Uh, we are going to be doing practice one hula hoop in Tinkercad today. So you can see this is a series circuit. We've got a nine volt battery here, and then it's going through three resistors, and we're asked to find some values. We're asked to find the total resistance, the voltage across the battery, and our voltage drops at all three of our resistors. Once we find those, we should be able to determine the sum of all of our voltage drops. So let's go over to Tinkercad and see what this looks like. So in Tinkercad, when you open it up, this is your dashboard. We've got designs, tutorials, but we're gonna go over to designs and we're gonna hit this new button over here. When we hit new, we wanna create a new circuit design. When we do that, we're going to get a really fun name up top. You can see mine is known as Swinky Albar. You can click on that to change the name. I'm going to change this to Hula Hoop so that I can better keep track of my files. Now, when we're working in Tinkercad, we have got all of our components to the side over here. And the one that we're always going to start with is a small breadboard. This is how we're going to wire things up. Breadboards function by having common terminals. You can see all of the ones that are labeled with our numbers and letters over here. They are all connected. So all of these allow us to easily create and prototype different circuits and electrical components. We also have our power rails right here. You can see the red highlights this entire red uh, row and then the black highlights this entire row as well. Those are going to be really helpful for our next step, which is adding our 9 volt battery. So I'm going to click and drag that out over here. You can see I have a positive and a negative end to this. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color of my wire for red for positive. And I'm going to connect that red wire to my red terminal. And then I'm going to switch it over to black and connect the negative terminal to the negative power rail over here. So now anywhere along this red line, I have got power. So I can distribute it to this to other parts of my circuit and anything that I want to design. Let's continue through our schematic that we are working off right over here. So back over here, you can see we have our 9 volt battery and we've got our power going in. So we've already drawn that one and our black going out over here, that's our negative. So now we want out of our power, we want this to go into resistor one, which is 90 ohms. So back over here, I'm gonna grab my resistor and I am going to take that, I'm going to place it right over here. You can see that the top terminal, right here, terminal two, doesn't matter with resistors. They don't have what's known as polarity, so they don't care whether or not you have a positive or negative in front or back. So terminal two is connected to our positive and outside of here is going to be terminal one. So there we go. And now anything along this line is going to be our output for our resistor. Now I need to change this over to 90 ohms. Right now it's set to kilo ohms, so switch that over to just the ohm symbol and set this up to 90. Cool. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our next resistor. Outside of 90, we've got 475. So let's grab another resistor. What I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to rotate it around 90 degrees, and then I'm going to place this over here. Again, we have the output of our first resistor going into the input of our next resistor. That's how series circuits work. One output feeds into the next input. This one right here is again at one ohm by default, so we're gonna switch that over to the 475 ohms. And you can see as I'm changing these ohm value, we're getting these different color bands. That's how we identify different resistors with different resistance values. All right, outside of 475, we are going to get our largest ohm yet, which is 800 ohms. So let's grab our resistor, and this one I'm going to have lined up where it is getting the output of our second resistor and it's going to go through here and then the output of that resistor goes into our negative. So this is our circuit. It's not a very exciting circuit because right now we're not worrying about turning on lights, making motors run or anything like that. What we are just worrying about is being able to find the values that we're looking for. When I start the simulation for this, it's a working circuit. Nothing is blowing up, nothing's going, but we're not getting any information. And that's because we need to use a multimeter. Multimeters found at the bottom of our basic components can be used to measure either amperage, voltage, or resistance. And they have different settings that you can set those to so we can measure all of those. 
Let's go over some of those different types as we grab some of the answers and I'll leave you some to practice as well. So the first thing that we're looking for is the total resistance. And based on what we know about series circuits, we should be able to determine that our total resistance is 90 plus 475 plus 800. That's what happens in a series circuit. Resistance is just summed in addition. So let's see, what are we supposed to get? Well, we would have 1275 here plus 90, so that's 1365. We should get 1365 resistance. So let's go over to our multimeter over here, and we're gonna take the positive end and attach that to our positive channel. And then we're going to take our negative and attach it to our negative channel. And when I start this simulation, it's now set to voltage. I need to switch this over to resistance, and we're gonna get an error. And the reason that we're getting an error right now is because there can't be power connected when we are measuring ohms. So what we're gonna do, we are going to take off our resistant or our red wire over here. And now when I start this simulation, you can see that we're going one, three, six. And if you remember what we were looking for before, we were looking for a thousand 365. This is exactly what we're getting. We're getting 1 kilo ohm 0.36, 1.36 kilo ohms, which if we convert that just to ohms, we're going to get the 1,365. You're welcome to write this down or the 100, 1,365 into the answer key. Either one will work. So that's how we measure ohms in our circuit. We need to make sure that our circuit is off and that we uh, are converting from kilo ohms to ohms. All right, cool. Now let's delete that multimeter. I'm going to re-put in this positive wire, check that back over to red, and let's see what's the next thing that we want to check. We want to check the voltage across the battery. Cool. So when we are measuring voltage, voltage also needs to be wired in parallel. That means that they should go across the same spots. So I actually could have kept that multimeter that I had before and left it in the same spot. We're just gonna rewire that there. So our positive goes into the positive channel and our negative goes into the negative channel. If you want to, you can keep up with changing the wires, but you don't have to. Then when I start this over here, you should see that we're getting 8.99 volts. This is a nine volt battery and that's typical of nine volt batteries that you don't actually get nine volts out of it. We've got something that is lost due to heat or the connection of the wires and we're not going to get the ideal thing. This is a simulator, so we should ideally get nine volts, but Tinkercad likes to be a little flavorful and make it seem more real. So it's fun, why not? So we've got our nine volts right here. That, that's our total voltage. Now what we are hoping to discover is what do we get when we find our voltage drop across each of our resistors? So let's see what we're asked to find next. It's our voltage drop at resistor one. So let's go over to resistor one and move a multimeter to there. So I'm gonna leave this multimeter right here and I'm going to grab a, another multimeter and I'm gonna rotate this one around over here so I can line it up with my resistor one. Now again, we want to wire this in parallel. I'm going to wire it in parallel but on reverse polarity just to show you what happens. What I mean by that is I'm gonna take the positive wire and I'm going to place it on the negative or the output of my first resistor. And the negative wire I'm gonna put at the input of my resistor. When I start this up, you can see that I get negative 593 millivolts. So that is 0.593 volts. We are just moving the decimal place over just a little bit. So we've got 0.593 millivolts. And you can see that it's negative because of the polarity. That's because we're measuring negative to positive instead of positive to negative. I just wanted to point that out in case you get a negative value, that may be because the polarity of your multimeter is backwards. So don't be concerned with that. It's not actually negative electricity. There's, I mean, there is negative electricity, but we're not looking for negative electricity. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to wire this back into parallel, which means positive to the input and negative to the output. And we run this, we should get 593, but we don't have that negative value. All right, 
that's all that I have for today. So please make sure that you are filling out the rest of this and hopefully you discover something about the relationship between all of our voltage drops and the sum of our voltage drops. Please make sure that you're reaching out with any questions, comments, concerns. Thanks so much for watching.